Bob Biggs here for another Personal Defense Network training update. This week I am here at Blackwing Shooting Center. I'm back in Ohio. Now the Personal Defense Network training tour is about a third of the way through. We've still got a long way ahead of us and lots of classes. We've been incredibly busy. There's been a lot going on. One of the things that's going on this week is the NRA show. So we'll be getting plenty of video in the next TV update. You'll see that for my presentations down at the NRA annual meeting in Houston, Texas. We'll also be stopping by the booths of a lot of our advertisers and, of course, our PDN tour sponsors. We're going to make sure that you get the latest, greatest updates from their booths as well. Now, one of the things we're going to talk about this week is teaching others to teach. Amari Broussard, Personal Defense Network contributor, is teaching right here at Black Wing Shooting Center, and he's teaching an instructor development course. Of course, many of you know that we recently launched the Association of Defensive Shooting Instructors. Amari is part of the staff there, and I'm on the advisory committee. What he's going to talk about is teaching others to teach, some of the things that he's had to learn, had to think about. All right, Amari Broussard here talking about teachers teaching teachers, uh, really instructor development. A uh, couple key points I want to bring up, maybe three is uh, the importance of answering the why question or teaching instructors to answer the why question, the importance of quality in instructors and how to gain quality instructors. So the first one being answering the why question. I think instructor development and in instructor development and it's important that uh, instructor candidates understand how to answer the why question and what way they should answer the why question. Early in my training, uh, I've been doing firearms and, and combatives for you know nearly two decades. Uh, in my earlier parts of training, it was more well, we do it this way because this is the way it's been done or this way has worked, you know, in certain situations. And now, as I've matured as an instructor and now teaching instructors, having uh, having completed instructor development in different programs, I would have to say that just saying that it's imp uh, this is the way we've always done it or this is the way the curriculum does it is not enough for the student. Uh, we have more educated students now with the internet and the information that's out there. Uh, students are coming to classes asking the why question and just giving them, you know, well this is the way we've always done it, to me ends up being a cop out. When we talk about answering the why question, that's going to help gain intellectual com comfort. They understand what they're doing, and they understand why they're doing it. That's going to make them more comfortable. Agree? Number two, uh, quality in instructors. And that requires a deeper level of knowledge for instructors. Uh, I've taught programs where, you know, becoming an instructor was kind of a given. Right? If you went through, if you completed the, the course, let's say it's a you know, three or four day or five day instructor uh, certification, I've taught programs where at the end of the course that goal was to ensure that the, the instructor or uh, candidate got certified. Um, and that used to be a model that I thought was the right way. Can I get, as an instructor's instructor, can I get them to a level to where they can teach a one day or two day program? Um, and it was more, uh, I think I put a lot of stress on myself to, to accomplish that. Well, doing instructor development today as I've matured in the industry, I understand number one, not everybody uh, needs to be an instructor. Not everybody is ready for instructor level information or ready to transfer that information to the student. Um, it's okay for an instructor candidate to come in and complete the instructor development and not necessarily get certified immediately. We just ended up in New Hampshire where we uh, did a course uh, as part of the, uh, we first did a course last week as part of the PDN tour and then we joined the Any Shooters Training Conference and we did a couple sessions there as well. I really was excited about coming here because number one I get to interact with a, a lot of top instructors, Craig Douglas, Rob Pincus, Dave Harrington, so it's great to be able to see what they're doing, exchange information. Uh, just a great, great vibe. Plus, then I get to reach a lot of people who may have never done this kind of stuff before. So, I like to think that I'm helping people out. So, it's a pretty good way of doing that. Today, we're working on uh, grounded engagement, trying to survive that initial burst. You found yourself on the ground for some reason, and you need to, before you worry about getting up, survive, uh, escaping, whatever, we need to survive that initial moment and that's what we've been working on this block for. Uh, basically we have some great resource in New York, NewYorkFirearms.com, NYFirearms.com where 
Uh, it's a blog and a forum. We review products, and we also have a great community of people. So we're going to continue to host trainers throughout the year, and we'll host Matt and host Rob several other times throughout the year. So it was pretty awesome, especially getting out there. You know, like I said, in New York, not the most gun-friendly state, 10-round mag, stuff like that, and seeing the group of people that actually came out, wanted to train, super enthusiastic about it, and hopefully we get more people out in, uh, in the state of New York and some of the band states to come out and train and realize there still is good training around, and you guys... As long as you can still own guns, uh, you guys should definitely get out, get on a range with us. Uh, Rob, anything you want to say about the tour? Or? Well, just that, you know, that's a big part of the mission of the Personal Events Network training tour. We have our sponsors. Uh, you can see them all over the uh, website. You see them all over the truck, obviously. Without the sponsors, we couldn't do the tour the way we do it. One of the big things about the way we do it is that we get to go into areas which I call uh, kind of training sparse, right? Uh, if you go into this areas where they never hosted training before, um, we were just at a range here in New Hampshire that the Londonderry uh, Rod and Glen Club or Londonderry Fish and Game. Fish and Game. And they they had uh, only hosted one other class before, Matt, and Matt was the very first class they ever hosted. The range has been around for 65 years, the club. They just started having outside training, so we're building a training community at that range. The PDN tour, because some of the, the uh, sponsors obviously underwrite some of the expenses, we're able to go to some parts of the country that don't have strong training community. Well, I really think people in some of these states are very motivated now. They, they realize that you know that they're in a position where they need to assert themselves. They need to fight to get their rights back in those states. And I think that we as a firearms community need to support them. We need to go out and try to encourage people to train, encourage clubs that aren't hosting training to host training.